Hey guys, it's Tatiana. I hope you guys had a great day because I have something extra, extra special for you today. Today we're going to try something that I just started doing recently, but I'm really, really excited about. Um, and it's called Michael Needling. Now, normally you can get Michael, Michael Needling done um, by, you know, at like a spa or like by a dermatologist or something, but so Dara has created this derma roller, which they call their uh, Microneedle Skin Roller 2.0 for you to use at home. So it has over like a hundred, like 192 or something amazing, like stainless steel little needles that you can see here. And I also love that it has like this protective cap on it. But what these little needles do is that they puncture the first layer of your skin. Now, the reason why I'm so excited about it is because by doing this, microneedling maybe about like once a week, it can, well, Sadara says, <laughs> it can help, you know, with acne scarring, which I have a lot of, and um, also good for like collagen production, all that different types of thing. But I love anything that is safe to use at home that I can do myself. Um, and it's just really easy. It's affordable really really great quality you know so this is one thing that we're going to do but before you micro needle it's very very important that you clean your skin really well right so i've kind of really kind of shifted my focus towards really like clean beauty like i'm i'm starting to be really particular about what i put on my skin and what better way to make sure you know what's in your products than by making it yourself right so today we're going to do a couple of diys and then we'll get into the micro needling but first things first before we get into the diys whenever you start to micro needle or and then afterwards you want to make sure you disinfect this roller and this roller i think it I think if you use it frequently, I think you could keep it for like a month or two months and then you're going to want to replace it. But what I really love is that you won't have to replace the whole thing. That this simply, it twists off and then you pull it off like that. And so you just want to get like a jar or like something like that. And so you can soak it. You want to get, you know, just like some alcohol or something and let it soak maybe like five five, 10 minutes or something like that. Because since this is going to be puncturing your skin, you don't want to trigger like, you don't want any like bacteria or any unnecessary like dirt or anything getting into your skin. So we are gonna let this soak for a bit while we get ready to do our DIYs. Now, I'm really excited. Um, so first I wanna do a DIY facial cleanser and then we'll do, um, a herbal steam as well with some dried flowers that I got off of Amazon. So, but this DOI facial cleanser, I did it for the first time maybe like last week. There is this book that I found on Kindle and I also put in the video carousel as well that has a lot, a lot of really great skincare recipes. So, and it's really, really simple. I love anything that's quick. It's not going to like take too much time to make <laughs> or anything like that. But First things first, you do want to start with some Castile soap. I like using like a mason jar to kind of get a store everything in and you can also use it to mix it in as well. But whatever you want to use to, you know, kind of store your cleanser, um, get that and have like a little jar or even those little travel size plastic bottles, whatever you like. But so you do want to get some Castile soap. I got the lavender one because for this recipe, it also calls for like some lavender essential oil, but I don't like using too much essential oils, um, especially when they're really pure because they're just really too strong. So I wanted to minimize the amount of drops of essential oils that I use. So um, to kind of balance it out, I got like the lavender one, but if you don't like lavender, you can just use like the unscented or whatever that you like. So you just need to get one third of a cup of the soap. Let me find my one third. So I make sure I measure the right way. Okay, so yes. So one third of Castile soap. And this is really great too because it's not just like a one time use. You know, you can like store it in your bathroom. Okay. Set that up. And again, so this is like the first thing that you're going to want to have in your jar is this soap. 
And honestly, like this Castelso really comes in handy for a lot of, lot of skincare DIY. So you may want to get you like a bigger bottle or multiple bottles of it. Now, this one is really fun. So you see the soap here. Um, get some honey. Get some nice raw honey. Um, I know it sounds like, what, honey? But it's actually like a lot of people have been starting to use honey in their skincare lately. So you're also going to want to get one third cup of honey. Oops, it's a little slippery with the soap. <laughs> um, and if your honey is just like a, like a little too thick, um, a tip that I typically do is I warm it up first so that it's not as thick. This is like a pretty good texture for it. Okay, so then you're going to want to um, add your honey in. And with this DIY, it's going to be really, really important that you do like mix it up um, pretty, pretty well each time that you use it because the ingredients, they are going to separate. And then, okay, so then we need some water. Um, you can use boiled water, purified water, or distilled water, or whatever you like. But you just need three tablespoons. Let me get my tablespoons measure. So just three tablespoons of water. So that's one, two, three. So you can see how the ingredients are like really separating. So once we're done, we're gonna have to really mix this up really well. Um, and then, so after you add the honey, you add the soap, and you add the water, you are gonna wanna add in like a nourishing oil. Um, I like to use jojoba oil on my skin, but if you don't, if you're not a fan of jojoba oil or you don't happen to have jojoba oil or you're just not interested, you know, um, you can also use other nourishing oils like coconut oil, argan oil. Honestly, you can even use like olive oil, you know, as well. But for me, I really prefer um, jojoba oil on my skin. So whichever oil you decide, you're going to want about um, two tablespoons. And then I have this one, but it's like a dropper. Let's see. One second. I just need to take this dropper off. There we go. If it does have a dropper, it'll be much easier if you do take it off instead of waiting for it to, um, drop out. <laughs> so, one tablespoon, and then we're going to add just one more. So this is the jojoba oil that I'm adding in. It looks like a truffle or something, just the way everything is like separating and stuff. Okay, and so then the last thing that you're going to want to add is if you use the lavender castile soap, you only really need like five drops of actual like lavender essential oil. You do want to make sure that you're getting the pure essential oil and I put one down here for you. Um, but you only need about five drops. If you end up doing the unscented one, you can go up to like 10 drops of lavender oil and that's fine. Okay, so let's do five drops. Let's see if it comes out. Okay, that's the one, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. So again, pure essential oil is very, very, very potent. You don't need a lot at all. A little goes a long way. So if you do want to get like a smaller bottle, um, that is fine. So put the lid back on. So that's it. Those are all the ingredients. It's literally just the Castile soap. It is the honey. <laughs> it is the nourishing oil. I chose jojoba oil. Um, it's a little bit of water and a little bit of lavender essential oil. So, and then I like mason jars too because then you can put like the date that you made it. Since we don't have any preservatives in this, um, it's not going to last as long. It will last longer if you put it like in your mini fridge or in your regular refrigerator. I'll have a longer shelf life, um, but just be mindful of that because since it is 
100% natural, what we made for this cleanser, there's no preservative. So there's nothing um, to kind of keep it lasting for that long. So you just want to gently kind of mix everything up before we start using it. And you see why it's important to make sure that your honey isn't too thick um, because then it, it'll be a little bit harder to mix it. But all you have to do is just like gently kind of move it around. And so again, this is our lavender honey facial cleanse um, DIY. And this is enough to last you for a while as well. Like literally with all the ingredients, um, very, very affordable ingredients for you to get easy to make at home you know all these ingredients are available on amazon and i did include them in the video carousel below as well um so just very very easy you know to kind of add to like your list and good ingredients to keep in your house normally as well so i definitely recommend stocking up on them but look just that that simple okay so we are going to wash our face <laughs> so let me just get my bowl together it's always a little bit tricky <laughs> when you're not like washing your face over a sink but you know it's fine so I just I just got like a bowl so I can show you guys for today's purposes normally you would do this over your kitchen sink <laughs> um, so just going to wet my face a little bit okay and then like as far as like how you want to get it out you can use like a spoon just want to make sure that it's really mixed up really well um you can use your hand as well i think for right now probably just use this little measuring so kind of just get in your hand and it has like a nice it's not too watery it's a good texture um but it's also not too thick as well and it honestly it smells amazing because we do have the lavender soap and we added the lavender essential oil as well so the lavender is really soothing so this makes it like a very like a gentle cleanser um if you don't want anything like too harsh this is like really good Honey is great for your skin as well. And so that's the big put. Oh, jojoba oil. So all this stuff is like super, 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 super nourishing. So just that simple. I love this facial cleanser. And the fact that like it smells like really good too. You know, lavender just naturally on its own. It's just very, very fragrant. But we didn't put so much that it's irritating to the skin, you know, because I don't like to use typically uh, fragrances that that have fragrances. Um, but this one is just very, very gentle, very gentle, very nourishing as well. So I like it. And it's just like it's really, really, really refreshing as well. So and again, this is something that you can store in your bathroom. If you're going to be traveling or going anywhere, you can easily put it like in a travel container. Let's make sure I got all the spots off. <laughs> but because we did have the jojoba oil in there, it is just very, my skin feels very soft and it feels very, very uh, refreshed as well. So just very light and gentle. So again, before you microneedle, you are going to want to use like a gentle cleanser nothing that's going to irritate your skin or anything like that and again if you get like a mason jar or however you store it you know you can just i would recommend keeping this like in your refrigerator so that it lasts longer it probably lasts for like a few weeks if you keep it in your refrigerator but if you end up not keeping it in the refrigerator for whatever reason because you forget um it may only last for a, like about a week you know so you do want to be mindful anytime you're doing any diy uh skincare that you are refrigerating it to kind of extend its shelf life okay so this was the diy lavender honey facial cleanser and before we micro needle i do want to do uh herbal steam with some dried flowers uh that i got 
Um, I did boil some water before we started. Hopefully it's still hot. <laughs> Um, but basically, let me pull them up for you here. Um, there are four different dried flowers that I recommend using for the herbal steam. Um, and so we have rose petals, um, some red rose petals, and they smell amazing. So to, the reason why I like doing steams is because it gets like that last bit of bacteria and dirt like out of your skin. Um, so I really, really like that. Um, and it's just something like really refreshing and it really kind of opens up your pores and stuff. So this is doing like a really, really like, you know, like thorough like cleanse and stuff. Okay, so you need to have three-fourths of dried rose petals, three-fourths cups of dried rose petals. Let's see. Oh, I can use this one actually. So you're going to want to get like a mixing bowl to um, put your petals in and then you're going to add them to the water again if you have like leftovers then you can simply um, just store them for later as well so but first we're just going to kind of get all the dried flowers so these are the dried oops okay that's a little bit much huh oh, that's fair these are the dried red rose petals. And then, what do we have next? Oh, we have the uh, chamomile flowers, which these smell amazing. So the reason why I love this theme is because it's just so fragrant. I don't know about you, but I love flowers like so much. So this is a brand new bag. <sighs> smells so good. Okay, so for this, though, um, we need half a cup of dried um, chamomile. Let me cut my other measuring here. So half a cup of dried chamomile. <sighs> Smells amazing. So we're putting that into a bowl. Um, and then we are going to do our lavender, where we need one-fourth cups of lavender. So more lavender. You'll find that in a lot of uh, DIY skincare recipes, there um, there is a lot of lavender used. Okay. So it's so amazing. So fresh. Okay. So a fourth a cup of dried lavender. Hopefully I don't spill it everywhere. This bag opening is pretty big. Okay. And then also if it's just like a little much or there's a particular like flower that you're not a fan of, you can just get a little bit less because honestly, you're not going to put that much into the hot water for the thing. You really just need a little bit. Okay. And then the last is our, I always feel like I've mispronounced this, but uh, comfrey leaves. I'll show you one second. Um, so you need half a cup of comfrey leaves. These ones right here. So it's just those four, the lavender, the chamomile, the rose petals, and the um, comfrey leaves. Comfrey leaves <laughs> is all that you need. So half a cup of these leaves. That's really good. Okay, so once you have everything all together, you just want to kind of like have it like in a bowl. Um, you can either mix it like with your hand or you can get like a wooden spoon or whatever, but really the idea is just to kind of like blend everything together. So it's just like a really good, healthy mix of all of the dried flowers. And again, any extra dried flowers that you have afterwards, you can simply just store it in a jar and then you can use it again for your next theme and it'll be all ready to go. Okay, so you get all the dried flowers. Again, this is lavender, rose petals, chamomile, and comfrey leaves. And we're going to use this mix to kind of make our herbal blend. Now, question is, is my boiled water still hot? <laughs> um, let's see. 
it does still feel hot, <laughs> so that's good. Um, so all you need um, is two tablespoons. So two tablespoons um, of the mix, and you're just gonna add them to the water. One second, let me just wash out this tablespoon because that's all the honey in it. So again, like I said, like you don't need a lot. So you see, we're gonna have like a lot of um, of the dried flowers left over. So just two tablespoons that in the water and then let me show you so you can see so it's still steaming a little bit now the key is you're gonna want to let this sit for about five minutes okay so we'll let this sit for a little bit and then we'll come back to it so again like these dried flowers they're really great um, and you can store them what you can also do you can use them for a lot of other diy things including making like bath bombs and all that different type of stuff so i can go through those so i'll give you some recipes ideas in like another video um but for today's purposes i just want to store these away so that i can use them you know for like my next steam or whatever i want to use them for but it's just really fragrant and again you know like with dried flowers there's so many different things that you can do with them you can make um little like sachets you know because it smells so good you can use it you know it's just potpourri in the bathroom so it's just really really nice but for me i like using dried flowers and like different little skincare recipes and stuff so so this fills up one jar <laughs> so all i would do you just store it um, like that and you can just put it away so like really cool right so love this again this is just like a really good mix of our chamomile dried flowers our lavender rose petal and some comfrey leaves and we're just letting it sit a bit um so it could kind of like kind of steep into like the hot water and give you like a nice steam um but just so i can kind of show you and kind of keep it moving so after it sits a little bit, you know, again, you're going to have like boiling hot water. And so all you have to do, and then it just, it smells really good. So this is when you can really kind of just, um, let me show you, you can really just kind of take the time to kind of just breathe in um, all the fragrance. Yes, Erin, this is water and it has the dried flowers in it. It has uh, rose petals, it has comfrey leaves, it has chamomile. Um, what else do we have? We have lavender in here. Um, so we're just making like an, an at-home like herbal steam, like a facial steam for you to use. Um, and it's completely like all natural, you know? So it kind of just kind of steps up the whole facial experience and super, super easy to do. Um, so it's really great. So again, so you just kind of just let it kind of steam through. But, and you want to sit maybe for like 10 minutes and letting it steam. But if you are not like a really big fan of like steams like that, you can also um, get like a washcloth, dip it in the water and kind of let it sit on your face as well. Um, but you do want to be mindful that you are using like <laughs> boiling hot water. So if it does feel like a little bit uncomfortable or too hot, you do want to kind of just let it kind of cool down a bit um, as well. So that is the facial steam. So once you're done with that, you did your facial cleanse. Your face is all nice and clean and you did your steam. So then it's time to move on to the micro needling, which is a lot of fun. Let me pull it up for you right here. So again, this is um, Sadara's Derma Roller 2.0, and we've just been kind of just letting it uh, kind of disinfect itself a bit um, in the alcohol, just kind of letting it soak because we don't want to have like any um, unnecessary dirt or bacteria getting into our skin. So, and all you have to do is just kind of twist it back on and then you're good to go. Let me just kind of dry this off. So, skin is all prepped, all clean. And again, so this is the Derma Roller. It has like 192 stainless steel little needles. 
and they basically puncture that first layer of your skin. And this is something that you can get as a professional treatment, but if it's something that you want to do at home, so Dart made it possible for you to do so. Because if you get a professional treatment, and the needles are a lot longer and um, not safe for you to do <laughs> at home. But the length of these needles is like 0.25, so it's a really good length um, for you to apply to your skin. Now, after you microneedle, you do have to be kind of careful with what you put on your skin because again, you are puncturing holes. You're basically putting like these little micro injuries into your skin. So you do want... Okay, let's see. A little bit technical issues. But we should be fine. Okay, so, okay, good. We're back. So, basically, now you don't want to apply too much pressure. If it feels uncomfortable, then you're applying too much pressure to it, okay? So, just gently, you're going to want to go in one direction four to five times. And then we'll go in another direction as well. So just enough pressure, um, not too much. Let's see, let's do the other side. And then you can also do your um, forehead as well um, and your neck as well, which is my like real uh, problem area. So again, you just want to be very, very, very gentle with it. Um, you don't want to apply too much pressure if you do start to feel uncomfortable. Um, and then you may want to kind of lift up, but just very gentle. And it may not feel like it is doing much, but trust me, it is. <laughs> so just very gently. And then let's do the forehead. Just very gentle, like these little needles are very, very powerful. And again, this is something that you may wanna do like um, once a week. You could do it about like once a week and then you're gonna wanna replace your um, the roller head maybe like every like one or two months. Okay, so we went that one direction and then we're gonna go this direction. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and do this side, two, three, four, and you just feel like a little tingling, you just feel the spikes a little bit, but it's nothing that is, okay. Let's see. Should be fine. Okay, so again, avoid the eye area. If it's easier for you to kind of just kind of split your face into sections to kind of kind of visualize it. But again, you're just gonna want to go gently up and down your face four to five times, four to five strokes, and kind of just really kind of like paint your face a little bit. And you're gonna go in one direction. Make sure you cover your whole face. You can also do your neck as well. And then once you do that one direction, then you just go like another direction as well. Some people go like diagonally and they maybe add like three. I just do two. Um, Cause again, my skin is more like on the sensitive side. So I never really wanna overdo it. Um, but that's it. That's pretty much it for using the uh, derma roller. And then simply afterwards, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you disinfect this again. So like when we first started, before we used it, we disinfected it. Um, and then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do um, disinfect it with like some rubbing alcohol or something. And then after it is sitting in some like rubbing alcohol for maybe like five to 10 minutes, then you can go ahead and put it away somewhere safe. And then you can come back to it next week. <laughs> So after you do your micro needling, it's very, very important um, what you put on your face afterwards. Luckily, Sadara, they do have 
um, some great options, you know, to kind of make it really easy for you. Let me pull it up here. Um, they have a marula oil, which is really good. And they also have a vitamin C serum as well. Now, since we do have, we did those little little punctures, the little, you know, into the skin with the, uh, the derma roller, it is going to help whatever you put on your face get absorbed um, more deeply and possibly be more effective as well. So that's why it's really great. I'm all for anything that is going to allow my skincare to really just kind of like do its magic. Um, but you do kind of want to stay away from like retinol, um, any AHAs, BHAs, stuff like that. Um, you don't want anything that's going to cause any inflammation. You know, so you just want to be like very mindful of that. Um, also, maybe it's just something that you could kind of do before you go to bed. But um, I will say the very first time I really, I wanted to test it myself. Um, the very first time I did microneedling and I was like, oh, it's fine. It's not going to hurt my skin if I put on this active serum. I don't know what I was thinking, um, but my, <laughs> my face was so, so irritated. So again, you do want to be super, super mindful of what you are putting on your skin after you do your microneedling because you don't want any inflammation, you know, that can also cause like any type of infection or extra bacteria, but you just, you just, you don't want your skin to be irritated, you know, it's supposed to be a pleasant experience. This is like an at-home facial, okay? You don't want to make anything too complicated. Um, but for today, <laughs> we're going to stay on the safe side and we're just going to use uh, Sadara's Vitamin C Serum, which I'm absolutely obsessed with because my skin always just looks and feels so much more hydrated and bouncy um, after I use this. And again, you really just need a little bit and then you're just gonna wanna pat it into your skin gently. And if you feel, if you choose like not to use the vitamin C serum, and again, if you're using anything with any like, like an active serum, <laughs> like I did, um, you may have to go and put some cold water on your face. But the vitamin C serum, like, I put it on right now. I don't feel any like uncomfortable tingling or anything like that. <laughs> it feels like really good. Um, I could probably actually put a little more because I did just put like a little bit. But because we use that derma roller, this vitamin C serum is really gonna go um, deep into my to the deep layers of my skin. <laughs> um, but again, it's very gentle. It's gentle enough to use after you micro needle, and it feels it feels really good. So after you microneedle, where are we putting your face? You shouldn't feel like any tingling or discomfort or anything like that. If you do, then you may just have to like quickly like rinse it off or something like that. But just be mindful of that, especially staying away from like retinol and stuff like that. And um, I do recommend using like real like natural, like organic like products like Sudara. Um, they are like a clean beauty brand, which I really, really appreciate that. They use all organic ingredients and they're cruelty free. Okay, so after your uh, derma roller is finished, it's infecting after you use it, you simply just, you can put the head back on by twisting it, and then you are going to want to just put the cap back on it to kind of really keep it uh, safe and secure. And I really, really like, can appreciate that because I'm always like, oh, where am I going <laughs> to? Where am I going to put my stuff, you know, but this helps keep it secure and ready to go for next time. But again, anytime you use a derma roller, I just automatically, I disinfect it um, with some rubbing alcohol, um, let it sit for a little bit and then go about my way. And then afterwards you can clean it and disinfect it again, you know, so even though you may not be able to see anything, you know, it is removing, it is puncturing into your skin. So you could have some proteins from your skin getting on the roller and you just, don't want any unnecessary bacteria on your skin. Okay, so that's that. And then after you do uh, the derma roller and you do your sand, um, I always go for like a really gentle cream. Um, and today, yes. So um, the Peter Thomas Roth uh, water drench cream, cloud cream, I really like because it's something gentle. It's not too thick. Um, I did just do a lot to my skin right now, so it is not going to um, mess it up. Hi, Erin. Do you want to do some skincare? <laughs> so 
this very very gentle cloud cream and again you just kind of just put it on your skin again this is by peter thomas rob um you can use like whatever you like um i have a lot of different <laughs> moisturizers but after i microneedle i just like to use this one because it's just very gentle it's very very lightweight um i'm super super mindful of what i put on my skin after my um i microneedle as well because i don't want to like clog my pores with any like unnecessary like oils or anything like that so rub it in and then you're good to go so for me i don't know it might be like preference but i like to kind of make sure that i don't go directly in the sun after i microneedle like right afterwards um so that's why i say it's something that maybe you want to do right before um you go to bed oh really great <laughs> I'm about to do some more uh, DIY skincare for you, Erin, in case you missed it earlier, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, so my skin, just just the immediate result of doing the microneedling right now, my skin feels very, very smooth, you know? If you have problem skin like me, like the microneedling, I recommend it. Um, it's something that you can do at home, but again, it's something that you can get professionally done. But I just really love... Um, House Hadar just made this this uh, derma roller, and they actually upgraded their original version. Um, and I love how you can twist off the top, so I don't have to buy a whole new tool. I can just simply just buy replacement caps as well. So I really, really, really like that. So there you go. So that's it. So make sure you clean your face. I always recommend doing like a little steam micro needle. Be careful what you put after you do the derma roller. Put your serum and get some moisturizer on. You're good to go. If you do have to go in the sun right after you use the derma, ro derma roller, as always, I really recommend making sure that you do use uh, some type of sunscreen, you know, because your skin is going to be a little bit extra sensitive, you know. But give it some time, you know. Try this for a few weeks and start kind of like watching to see if you have any changes, you know. But I think the biggest, biggest thing um, for me, which I had to learn, is just making sure that you're not just putting too much pressure. It takes very little effort to kind of roll it. You know, you don't want to, if you see blood or something when you're doing this at home, like you're putting too much pressure, you know, if you feel overly uncomfortable, too much pressure, you know, so kind of steer clear of that. You do want to make sure that you are kind of taking your time, doing it gently, making sure you can't even just get like your problem areas and just target that as well. And you do want to make sure that you are mindful of what you put on your skin afterwards because again you're basically like you're puncturing the first layer of your skin you're making like these little injuries you know so you just you want something gentle you want something that's not going to irritate your skin and you don't want to make the mistake that i made well because i was just curious um of using like like an active serum or retinol or something in your skin after you microneedle because it's just like like a big no-no like it's going to be like a lot of pain and like <laughs> it's not going to be fun at all okay so that was the microneedling thing so um earlier i did make like a diy facial cleanser um if you're just now joining i do want to kind of show you how to make this um again i'm really kind of getting into like clean beauty and stuff and so i'm trying to be mindful of like what i'm putting on my skin i absolutely love uh <laughs> i absolutely love um using honey and i love using like lavender and stuff like that and so i think i'm gonna make like another batch um of this maybe i'll get the second batch from my mom or like my best friend or something like that because this will last you like a really really long time but again it's something it's very very simple to make let me get my um my measuring cups oh i do have another jar so we can make this cleanser again so i absolutely love it and it smells so good you know like as well and you can kind of mix it up and kind of cater it to what you like um so i did decide to go with dr bronner's um lavender castile soap now this castile soap like if you're really big if you're really into like diy skincare like this is definitely going to be like one of the number one things that the recipes call for so i recommend stocking up maybe getting a few different fragrances or even getting like the unscented version as well uh for today though the facial cleanser that I'm doing is the lavender honey. So I kind of went with the lavender castile soap so that I wouldn't have to use as much as lavender essential oil because since my skin is so sensitive, um, 
any pure essential oil is very, very strong. And so I want to use as little as possible. And a lot of these DIY skincare do call for um, essential oils. So I try to minimize like how much that I use. Hi, Chase. How are you? I'm about to do a DIY facial cleanser if you want to join in. So first things first, um, let's see. I think it's just I have my notes here because I didn't want to tell you wrong, <laughs> to be honest. Um, OK, so you want a third of a cup of the Castile soap. And so just get like whatever measuring cup that you use. And then I'm just going to pour this directly into the jar that I'm going to be storing it into. So get a little mason jar, the castile soap. And again, when you put these ingredients in, um, they're all going to kind of separate. So before you use it, you do want to make sure that you do kind of mix it up really well like this one. So after you have your castile soap, then you're going to want to do one third, um, third cup of honey. And I'm using the Kirkland one. Um, you just, you know, like any like raw honey. So just one third cup of it. If your honey is um, a little bit thicker, um, I recommend like if it's too thick, like this is a this is good consistency. But if it's too thick, you can just warm it up, and it'll kind of loosen up a bit, you know. Which is, you know, sometimes like it, how do you say, it? like crystallizes or hardens and stuff. Um, so then you're just going to want to kind of add this in there. So if you just simply warm it up for a little bit, um, it'll loosen it up a bit and it'll be good to go. So we have the soap and we have the honey in the jar. And then simply you're going to want to add um, about three tablespoons of water. If I can find my tablespoon. I don't know where I put it. But let's see. I don't know what I did with it. Okay, so just do three tablespoons of water. I don't know where I did with it. I had it earlier. I know. It's okay. You can eyeball it. <laughs> okay, and if you put a little bit more water, I mean, it's fine. Like, it's just water. It's not going to hurt. It's for your face anyway, right? Um, so that's that. And then you're going to want to put, like, a nourishing oil um, what did I put in here? I think I put the jojoba oil on here. For me, um, I really like jojoba oil for my sensitive skin. I think it's very, very nourishing and also doesn't clog my pores, which I like that. But um, if you're not a fan of jojoba oil, you can also use like argan oil. You can also even use um, olive oil as well. Olive oil, coconut oil, soybean oil, like any of those are fine. Um, but for today, I am using jojoba oil. And so you're going to want to put about two teaspoons of jojoba oil. I'm just eyeballing it because I don't know what I did with my tablespoon measurement. <laughs> but you can see how it is separating in here. And then after that, you're just going to want to put about five drops of lavender essential oil. Now, if you happen to go with the unscented Castile soap, you can do about 10 drops of lavender essential oil. You do want to make sure that it is like 100% pure and natural essential oil, with like nothing added to it because um, you don't want to have like any chemicals or anything kind of ruining this <laughs> at home DIY skincare. We're all about like natural. Um, so let's see if it comes out. Sometimes it takes a bit, but you just, I did the lavender soap, so I just want five drops of this lavender essential oil. Wow, Erin. You can do a lot with those emojis. <laughs> okay. So, and that's it. That's literally, it's that simple to make like your own cleanser, which I'm like so, so obsessed with. But you see how the ingredients are separated. So we have the castile, so we have the honey, we have the water, we have the jojoba oil, and then we have our few drops of lavender essential oil. So you're going to make sure this is on secure, but not too tight that you can't open it again. Um, and then you're just going to want to gently kind of move it around. Basically, the goal is to make sure that everything is mixed really well. You don't want to like, like shake it like too hot, too hard or anything like that. But you can just gently kind of move this around. And again, since this is like a natural facial cleanser, there's no preservatives or anything like that. Um, so you may want to just kind of store it in your refrigerator so that it lasts longer. 
Um, if you don't put in the refrigerator, I would say maybe you can only um, keep it maybe for about a week. But if you put in the refrigerator, it could last for like a few weeks. But we just want to kind of be mindful of that. So, so anytime that you're ready to use the cleanser, just make sure that you do mix it and then it's good to go. What I love about this cleanser is that it is not too thick and it's not too watery. It is, <laughs> it is a really, really good consistency. Um, I don't know if you like can tell, but it just, it feels really, really, really good. Here, I'll show you because we already did like a whole like facial and micro needling. Um, but it smells really good as well. So it has, it foams up really, really nicely. But again, the honey makes it really, really, really smooth. And the jojoba oil makes it very like nourishing. The lavender is very kind of soothing. It has like a relaxing natural scent to it. Um, if you are not a fan of lavender, which I know some people are, um, I would, and see what other ones will be good. Something you want something that's kind of grounding, something that's soft, that's not too strong. Um, but you don't want anything minty. Like I wouldn't recommend, um, I wouldn't recommend like peppermint or any like orange or citruses or anything like that, especially if you're going to go into the sun afterwards because your skin will be like extra sensitive. Um, but maybe like something like a cedar wood would be good um, i'm trying to think like what else but yeah so lavender is just like it's very very calming and soothing i know some people have allergies to it though so i was trying to think like okay well what else could you use uh clove is good frankincense tea tree is good i like tea tree oil especially for like facial cleansers and stuff like that but you see how it just it lathers up really nice it's a it's not super thick. It almost feels like a paste almost in a way, um, but it does a really, really good job of cleansing your face. Just like, you know, just like a natural solution if you want just like, um, just like a very, very gentle cleanser. I definitely recommend that. So after you do that, then um, I also have like this, uh, herbal steam that we did that's just like really really amazing and again something that's super super simple to do and I will show you the recipe really quick um let me get some of this stuff out of the way so you're gonna want to use like a lot of dried flowers um the reason like I like doing steams with dried flowers is just because I just feel like they just have like these natural properties that are like really like kind of th therapeutic for me and it like it smells really really good too and i just love doing a steam before i do any type of micro needling but again super super simple to do um let me see if i have so oh there it is so we're gonna start with the rose petals and you're going to want like three fourths of dried rose petals and then i have this one somewhere okay so wow <laughs> and again if you have like a lot extra too you can just simply store it away so i definitely recommend like maybe using like a mason jar or something like that to kind of store it Okay, so you basically just want to get your mixing mixing bowl and get the flowers in there. So these are the dried uh, rose petals. And then you are going to want to do like half a cup of dried chamomile. Have my hair. Chamomile. I love flowers in general and to like use like dried flowers as part of my like skincare routine. It just makes it like that much better, <laughs> that much more of like a pleasant experience. You know what I mean? So half a cup of the chamomile, dried chamomile. Can I mix that in? And then, so that was the chamomile that I used. Okay. And then also you're going to do like a fourth a cup of lavender. I got like, <laughs> 
this enormous uh, lavender, dried <laughs> lavender, um, because lavender, especially like dried lavender flowers, is used in like there's so many different uses for it, but it's used in like a lot of different um, DIY skincare recipes, and so I didn't want to run out. <laughs> So I went for like this really, really great bag, but it's also just like a really, really great price, you know? So I like it. Let's see all the little lavender buds. And the second you open it, it's just like, oh, like it smells so good, you know? And it's great to use like fragrance like in your, in your house too as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use it. Okay, so, and then you're gonna want um, a fourth a cup of lavender. You can honestly, if you're, again, lavender is like either, for some people, I feel like it's either like you love it or hate it type of thing. Um, so, four for a cup of lavender. So, you can use, you can, you know, like you don't have to follow this recipe like to the T. Like if there's one like flower that you enjoy more than the other, you can kind of, you know, kind of mix up a bit. Because in the end, for the steam, you actually don't even use that much of the flowers. We end up like storing most of it in a jar to use for next time, so. And then, last but not least, um, half a cup of dried comfrey leaves, which I have here. Um, so these are organic, organic. <laughs> okay, so a half a cup of these leaves. It just like smells so good. Everything just smells like amazing. So, and then you do want to make sure that you are sealing your flowers to make them last longer and you can use them again. So, see, so you have everything in a mixing bowl. You can, you can either like use your hand or you can get like a wooden spoon, but the idea is just to kind of, um, mix them all up just get like a really good blend of all the flowers again this is dried rose petals dried chamomile um dried lavender buds and uh dried comfrey leaves so very 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 simple to use and simple to make okay so once you feel like you have like a good blend of it um, all you're going to need, honestly, is like some hot boiling water and two tablespoons, two tablespoons of the mix. So literally one, two, and that's it. And then you're going to put them in the water. And while it's still steaming, I did this one earlier, so it's a little warm, but it's not like steaming out. Um, so once you put the two tablespoons of the dried flowers into the hot water, then you are going to let them sit for about like five to ten minutes. You're going to cover it up, okay? And then after that time passes, then you can either, you know, kind of like, you know, like kind of make a tent, like with the towel, like put a towel over you to kind of like close it in and do just do your facial steam for like five to ten minutes it's that simple um if it does feel too hot of course naturally make sure like you kind of you can sit back a little bit further you don't have to be like <laughs> directly like in the bowl or anything like that like the point is it's just to kind of make sure that you're clearing out like any like extra dirt that didn't come off your cleanser or anything like that really kind of just and it's also relaxing too like the reason why i love using like the dried flowers is because it's just the it's just such a soothing scent that comes out from the dried flowers you know um so if you do that so then and then that's it and if you don't want to do like a steam you can honestly simply just get like a washcloth dip it into the um into the bowl kind of soak it and then you can just put the washcloth on your face and let it sit there for like a few minutes. Again, if you experience any irritation, immediately stop and kind of rinse your face off. But you shouldn't. These are very gentle. I have very sensitive skin and I don't experience any irritation. But I do like to do it like as the steam. Um, so it's just that simple. So and then because we did like mix in a lot, you know, if next time you're like, oh, like I don't want to like end up like using that many dried flowers you can obviously you know kind of cater the recipe to like what works for you 
But if you end up do having like uh, some extra dried flowers, all you have to do is simply just get like a mason jar or some type of jar and kind of um, just kind of secure it in there. And then it's good to go for next time. So it's that simple. And then you can use it for like a lot of other uh, recipes, which is really, really great. Okay, so that was for the herbal steam. And so we're going to tuck this away. So we did two, actually, um, we did our lavender honey uh, facial mask. And again, anytime that you use it, you do want to kind of make sure that you are mixing it up really good. Because since we do, we have Castile soap, we have honey, we have uh, lavender <laughs> essential oil, and we have a whole oil in it. It's naturally the ingredients are going to separate. Um, but all you have to do is just kind of gently mix it. You're not going to want to like shake it super hard or anything. Um, just kind of gently mix it until it um, is it's mixed really nicely. Okay, so this is our, our natural um, lavender honey facial cleanser. And then these are the dry flowers that we use for the herbal steam. And again, storm away so that you can use them again. But that's pretty much it. Um, this is my new favorite skincare tool, um, the Derma Roller by Sadara. And again, anytime that you do use the derma roller. I can't stress this enough. You do want to make sure 100% before anything else that you disinfect this derma roller because it has 192 stainless steel little <laughs> micro needles, you know, and you don't want to have it like contaminated or dirty and you are rolling it on your skin and you are basically transferring dirt into your skin. You know what I mean? So just disinfect it for like five to 10 minutes with like some rubbing alcohol. I like to just let it sit. Um, you can probably just spray it with some alcohol. But the point is, do make sure that you clean this before and after you use the derma roller, okay? And another big thing is do make sure that you're only applying like just a light pressure it should not be overly uncomfortable you know it should not uh you should not experience any bleeding now it may be a different story if you're going to get a professional thing but for this at home microneedling it's just it's very simple and it may not seem like it's doing much but it's actually doing a whole lot with these 192 stainless steel needles it's puncturing the first layer of your skin and it's basically allowing the skincare to get into your pores into the deep layers of your skin and it really kind of helps them be more effective and you do want to make sure that you do are you very mindful of what you put on your skin after you microneedle and I recommend using Sadara's um, vitamin C serum because it's very gentle. Um, I made the mistake, well, I was like really curious, um, but you don't want to use any like active serums at the microneedle because whether you realize it or not, you have all these punctures into your skin, these little micro injuries basically, and you just don't want anything that's going to cause any inflammation, okay? So you do want to be mindful of that. So I feel like safe choices are Sadar's vitamin C serum. Um, they, they're, all their products are cruelty free, they're organic and all that other really, really great stuff. Um, they also have a marula oil as well that you can use if you like, okay? So be mindful of that. And then if you do want to use a cleanser, you know, just use like a gentle cleanser. I like to do the microneedling once a week and before I go to bed. Um, so that I'm not going into direct sunlight. But if you do have to go into direct sunlight, you do want to make sure that you are using some type of SPF, some type of sunscreen, because your skin will be a little bit extra sensitive, you know? So, all right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much <laughs> for tuning in um, and doing these little DIYs with me. I am going to be doing a lot more because, again, like my focus, I'm really trying to do more like clean beauty and be mindful of what I'm putting on my skin because my skin is very active, it's very sensitive, it's very acne prone, so I have very pro problematic skin. Um, so I just want to use, you know, just real like natural ingredients, you know, when there are a lot of great clean beauty brands and Sadara is one of them. So I really, really appreciate them. I love, love using their products. But everything that I broke down today, including everything for the DIY skincare, the facial cleanser, the, the herbal steam, it's all in the video carousel below. All right, well, I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of the night, and I'll see you guys soon with some more DIYs.